हेलो डियर स्टूडेंट्स माइ सेल्फ डॉक्टर सचिन अर्जुन गुरुए असिस्टंट प्रोफेसर फ्रॉम के टी एच एम कॉलेज नासिक इन द प्रीवियस लेक्चर ऑफ एंटामोलॉजी फर्स्ट वी हैव स्टार्टेड विद द चैप्टर फोर मॉर्फोलॉजी ऑफ इंसेक्ट एंड वी आर डिस्कसिंग द मॉर्फोलॉजी ऑफ हेड ऑफ जनरलाइज इंसेक्ट एंड द कम्प्लीटेड द टॉपिक दैट इज हेड ओरिएटेशन एंड हैव स्टार्टेड विद द टॉपिक हेड स्केलेटन now head skeleton is composed of the two parts the head sutures and the head sclerites or the areas of which we have already completed with the head sutures and in this video we are going to learn the head sclerites or the areas so let's see first of all before start with the head sclerite let us have a quick summary whatever sutures we have discussed into the previous lecture the first suture we have discussed that is labrio clypeo labral suture which present between the labrum and clypeus then second suture we have discussed the clypeo frontal suture which is also referred as the epistomal suture then third suture we have discussed that is epicranial suture which is also referred as ecdysial suture which is um, present in between the frons and the epicranium then next one is the occipital suture this occipital suture is present between the area known as the epicranium and the occiput then the post occipital suture post occipital suture is present between the occiput and the post occiput then after we have discussed the suture known as the subgenal suture and subgenal suture is responsible for dividing the frons area from that of the gena then the subgenal suture subgenal suture is uh, consist of or is a composite suture which consist of the pleurostomal suture and the hypostomal suture then the next suture we have discussed that is ocular suture which encircling the compound eyes and the last suture is the antenna now due to the presence of this suture the whole area of an insect head is divisible into the different areas and these areas are generally referred as the head sclerites which we are going to learn in this topic so let's start with the head sclerite or the areas the cuticular areas can be seen on the external surface of the head so here you can see the different areas which are nothing but the uh, uh, cuticular areas which can recognize on the insect head and this is only get form due to the presence of a different kinds of the suture on the area of insect head they become well evident after dechitinization now dechitinization is the process by which whatever chitin content of the skeleton is there which is generally removed and this dechitinization can be uh, achieved by treating that um, particular part with the aqueous koh at the high temperature now all these areas of the insect head capsule are also known as the head sclerites the sclerites represent simply the intersutural areas intersutural areas in the sense the area which is present between the two different sutures for example if you see this area which is known as a clypeus it is present between the two suture from the anterior side it is a clypeo labral suture and from posterior side it is bounded by the clypeo frontal suture or epistomal suture means in between this clypeo labral and the clypeo frontal suture whatever areas is there it is referred as intersutural areas so all these sclerites they are get form in between the two different uh, sutures now insect head generally exhibiting a different kinds of the sclerites or as follows so first sclerite at which is located at the anterior most part of the insect head which is known as labrum the next one is a uh, clypeus then third one is the frons the next one is the epicranium then next one is a occiput then post occiput after that this one is a uh, gena then ocular sclerite and antennal sclerite so these are the different kinds of the sclerites which can easily be recognized on the head of an generalized insect 
So let's see one by one all these clay rights. So start first of all with the labrum. Now labrum is a widely discussed structure of the insect head and some workers have regarded this labrum as a fused segmental appendage which is now universally accepted that is a sclerite or the first sclerite of the insect head and not having any significance of the segmental appendage of the uh, segment belongs to the head is concerned. So now it is well established is a first sclerite of the insect head. Now this labrum is freely attached to the lower margin of the clypeus by the suture which is referred as a clypeolabral suture. Generally this labrum is hang over the mouth or the preoral cavity. As is a hang just above the preoral cavity it is also termed as the upper lip particularly in case of the mandibulate kind of the insects. But in fluid feeding insect this labrum may undergoes a various modification. But generally in a mandibulate insect the labrum internally it forms a anterior part of epipharyngeal wall of the preoral cavity and is internally line with the gustatory receptors. These gustatory receptors are concerned with the taste of the food material and this labrum can move upward downwards and can be pulled and pushed to the some extent and whatever movement which is shown by this labrum that is forward backward or the pulled and push this is only due to the elastic nature of the suture and whatever muscles which are going to innervate into the labrum region. So this movement is due to the presence of the muscles of the labrum and the labrum is innervated by a three types of muscles. Now first one is a compressor labral muscle, second one is a anterior labral muscle and third one is a posterior labral muscle. So let's see one by one first of all the compressor labral muscles. Now compressor labral muscles are occurs in a pair on a lateral side or either on a single median one. So this is the location follow the pointer. So this is actually the uh, location of that compressor labral muscle from the internal side of the labrum either it occurs in a pair or either it may occurs in a single region in the center. So they are attached by one end on the anterior and by other end on the posterior wall of that labrum itself. The compressor muscles being bring about the retraction, prolongation and contraction of the labrum. So this kind of the movement is due to the first that is compressor muscle. Then second variety of muscle is the anterior labral muscle. So here these are the anterior labral muscle. Now these anterior labral muscles are paired but unbranched muscles. They originate from the inner surface of the frons. So if you uh, imagine the position of the labrum immediate to the labrum there is a clypeus and then after the region is known as a frons. Means these anterior muscles they are coming from the frons and they are innervated into the labrum. Now they, these muscles move the labrum in a forward direction. In the forward direction whatever forward movement is there for that labrum is contributed by this anterior labral muscle. So this is about the anterior labral muscle. The next one is a posterior labral muscle. Now the posterior labral muscles are also paired muscle but most importantly they are the branched labral muscle. Again they originate from the anterior lateral region of the frons and these muscles that is the posterior labral muscle pulls the labrum in a backward means anterior muscles they gives a forward uh, direction and the <coughs> posterior muscle pulls it in a backward condition. Now whatever movement which is shown by that labrum in the mandibulate insects due to the presence of these muscles is very important because these kind of the mouth parts are found into the insect which feeds on a solid food material and the mandibles they are bringing out the grinding action and which is responsible for cutting the solid food material into the smaller pieces. And when that mandibles are operating 
if the labrum is not moved from their place because in at the resting condition it is very closely applied with the mandibles only so it is may have the chance if the labrum do not shows any kind of the movement then the it is very much possible that the labrum may interfere with the uh, sharp edges of the mandibles and which is responsible for causing the cutting of labrum itself and hence the movement of the labrum is necessary which is contributed by these muscles so this is about the first sclerite that is labrum then second one is a clypeus now clypeus this is the second uh, sclerite of the insect head which is demarcated by the clypeo labral suture from the anterior side and clypeo frontal suture from the posterior side thus it occupies the position in between the anterior labral and posterior frons uh, frontal sclerite in some insects this clypeus is completely or partially divided into the two parts by a transverse suture so here if you see closely in this diagram you can able to make out the small dotted line which is representing a transverse suture the transverse suture is not always present in all insect but in some insect we, when this transverse suture is present the whole sclerite that is known as a clypeus is divisible into the two parts posterior part and anterior part so this is a anterior part and this is a posterior part so posterior part of the clypeus is referred as a post clypeus while the anterior part of the clypeus is known as the ante clypeus now keep remember so this ante clypeus and post clypeus is present uh, when and when there is a presence of a transverse suture at a median area of the clypeal region now both this part that is post clypeus and the an uh, ante clypeus is well evident in case of the house cricket the post clypeus is modifies into the convex processes so out of which this post posterior part of the clypeus due to the presence of transverse suture known as a post clypeus in some cases it is modified into the convex process and that convex process is termed as the ginglimus of the mandible and that ginglimus of the mandible is generally found into the arthropteroid insect for example in the grasshoppers many species of the grasshopper the post clypeus is becomes a somewhat um, convex one and which is going to form the ginglimus so this sclerite that is clypeus is <coughs> of the head which is provided with the sibarial dilator muscles so whatever sibarial dilator muscles are there which are going to innervate from the inner side of the clypeus this sibarial dilator muscles are very important because which is responsible for dilating the cavity of the sibarial pump and that muscles are innervated from the inner side of this sclerite known as the clypeus so this is about the clypeus the next one is the frons now frons is extend from the anterior clypeo frontal suture so this is a clypeo frontal suture which is also referred as epistomal suture to the posterior so this is posterior frontal suture so the frons occurs between the clypeo frontal suture and the frontal suture in arthropteroid insect it may possesses a single median ocellus and in other cases it may bear a lateral ocelli also so here in this diagram you can see the lateral ocelli as well as median ocelli both they are lies in a frons but in however in some cases uh, the lateral ocelli they may occupies the other region known as a parietal region so here in this uh, kind of uh, the diagram you, you can see the this is the region on known as a frons which only contains a median ocelli in some cases all the three ocelli may occurs into the region of frons and in other cases only the median ocellus is lies in among the frons region so however when the clypeo frontal suture remains indefined or when this suture is indistinct or obscure at that time the anterior tentorial pit reveals the demarcation of this sclerite from that of the clypeal region 
means in some insects for example in the cockroaches this clypeofrontal suture is indistinct one then how to demarcate between the clypeus and frons you have to see the position of anterior temporal pit as these pits are always lies on the clypeofrontal suture so in cockroaches the suture is not present but you can able to make out the anterior temporal pit and where the anterior temporal pit is located so this is a demarcating boundary in between the clypeus and the frons the frons represent typically the upper fascial region so this is the fascial region of the insect head and the pharyngeal dilator labral hypopharyngeal muscles and the adductor muscles of mandibles are usually inserted on the middle of this frons region means uh, physiologically this frons is also very important because it is giving a site of attachment for a various kind of the muscles for example the pharyngeal dilator muscles labral hypopharyngeal muscles and the adductor muscles of the mandible all these are attached from the inner side of the frons uh, frontal region so this is about the sclerite known as the frons the next one is the epicranium the epicranial suture separates the epicranium from that of the frons so this is a epicranial suture which is inverted y shaped suture which is responsible for separating the frons from that of the epicranium so this part whole part just above the frontal suture this is referred as the epicranium it represent the entire upper region of the insect head it extend from the anterior frontal to the posterior occipital suture here you can see so this is a frontal suture means this epicranium is begins here and it extends up to the occipital suture so this is a occipital suture so whatever area which is present between this frontal suture and occipital suture so this whole area is referred as the epicranium above the frons it is divided by the coronal suture into the two exactly identical lateral plates and these lateral plates are referred as the parietal means in some insects the stem of the y which is known as a coronal suture is present this coronal suture is responsible for dividing the part of the epicranium into the exactly the two lateral portion and these lateral portions are referred as the parietals now these parietals are characterized by having a three structure first one is a antennae second one is a lateral ocelli and third one is the compound eyes the posterior most undivided region here this is a undivided region where this coronal suture is not extended so the part of the epicranium which remains undivided it is referred as the vertex here you can uh, see in the label in this diagram so this is the uppermost part where the head is not divided is referred as the vertex it forms exactly the top of the head so this is in this diagram you can see so this is the topmost portion of the insect head which is remains undivided and this is referred as the vertex the independent status of the vertex as a complete different sclerite is still a controversial uh, subject hence this vertex it is the included as a part of the epicranium sclerite only so this is about the epicranium the next one is the occiput now occiput is a u shape posterior cuticular band it represent the areas from the occipital to the post occipital suture so here in this diagram you can see so this is a occipital suture and this one is a post occipital suture so the area which lies between this occipital and post occipital suture is referred as the occiput is a sclerite and among the higher insect however this occiput occiput as a sclerite is absent or this occipital suture is obscure so this is about the occiput the next one is the post occiput the post occipital foramen uh, occipital foramen is 
enclosed from the dorsal and lateral side so this is a occipital foramen which is enclosed from the dorsal side as well as from the lateral side a by a narrow sclerite and this narrow sclerite is referred as the post occiput so this area is referred as the post occiput it lies between the occiput and the neck so this is a occiput and this part is a neck so in between that occiput and neck the sclerite is referred as the post occiput post occiput is mark off from the occiput by a transverse post occipital suture now this post occipital suture is a demarcating boundary between the occiput and post occiput but in when or in some insects when the post occipital suture is absent or remains obscure or indistinct you have to see the position of posterior tentorial pits as this posterior tentorial pits are always lies on post occipital suture means in some insects when this suture is absent you have to see the posterior position of the posterior tentorial pit which is a demarcating boundary between the occiput and the post occiput similarly we have uh, discussed about that in clypeo frontal suture when this clypeo frontal suture is absent the demarcating boundary is the position of anterior temporal pit likewise here when the post occipital suture is absent you have to see the position of posterior temporal pit which lies exactly on that post occipital suture and which is a demarcating point of the occiput from that of the post occiput now the dorsal thoracic muscles are attached to the endoskeletal ridges of post occipital suture means whatever muscles which are coming from the prothoracic part these are attached to the ridges which are provided by that post occipital uh, sclerite so these muscles articulates the head freely with that of the thoracic part and the anterior lateral inner margin of the post occiput produces a small process and this small process is referred as the occipital condyle so this is about the sclerite known as the post occiput the next one is the genie and the post genial areas genie is a plural word singular is a gena the gena represent the lateral areas of the insect head so these are the lateral areas of the insect head in this diagram you can see so this is a lateral region of the insect head which is referred as the gena and plural is a genie so on either side the gena extends from the compound eyes and to the mandibular trochanter means it start from the compound eyes from the posterior side and at the anterior side it has a mandibular trochanter the hinder part develops into the socket to accommodate the mandibular condyle so these are the mandibular condyle posterior to the occipital suture each lateral gena is commonly called as the post gena so in this diagram you can see so this is known as the occiput and the posterior most part of that post occiput which also lies from the lateral side often it is referred as the post gena now each post gena provides a condylar articulation to the maxillae so whatever maxillae is there which are going to uh, articulate with the processes of that post gena the subgenal areas above and below the mandible can be referred to as the pleurostoma and hypostoma respectively that we have already discussed into the first lecture that is the subgenal suture is a composite uh, suture which is uh, forming a pleuro uh, pleurostomal suture and the hypostomal suture forming the pleurostoma and the hypostoma respectively now these areas are separated in some insects by the suture known as the hypostomal suture so this is a hypostomal suture and similarly the pleurostomal suture so this is a pleurostomal suture which separates the pleurostoma from the base of the mandible so this is the basal region of the mandible which separate from that pleurostoma with the suture known as pleurostomal suture so this is about the gena and post genal areas the next sclerite is the ocular sclerite which is very simple one so this ocular sclerite forms a cuticular ring around each compound eye so you can see so this is a cuticular ring 
around the compound eyes means this cuticular uh, ocular suture along with the compound eyes they are going to form a sclerite which is known as the ocular sclerite so all in this diagram you can see so this is a ocular suture and ocular suture uh, uh, enclosing the compound eyes is referred as the ocular sclerite and the last one is the antennal sclerite so antennal sclerite forms an annulus this annulus is located at the base of each antenna so here in this diagram also you can see so this is the antennal sclerite now actually antennal sclerite is composed of the antennal suture enclosing of uh, inclusion of the antennae means antennae together with the antennal suture forms a sclerite known as the antennal sclerite now this antennal sclerite is very well developed into the insects belongs to the order known as the plecoptera so this is about the different kinds of the suture so let's see a quick summary whatever sclerites or the areas we have discussed in this lecture the anterior most sclerite of the insect head is known as the labrum then posterior to the labrum is a second sclerite known as the clypeus followed by the next sclerite known as the frons then the epicranium the coronal suture divides the epicranium into the equally sized lateral areas which are known as the parietals and this parietal contains a three structure that is antennae lateral ocelli and compound eyes then undivided part of the epicranium is referred as the vertex the next sclerite we have discussed that is the occiput which lies between the occipital suture and post occipital suture the next sclerite we have discussed the closed occipital sclerite which lies between the occiput and the neck the next sclerite we have discussed that is a gina and postgenal area which lies between the frons and the occiput then posterior most part of the occiput is uh, having a lateral areas which are referred as the postgena then we have discussed this ocular suture of the compound eyes and the last one is a antennal sclerite inclusion uh, including the antennal suture and the antennae so this is about the head sclerite and the areas so with this we have completed with the insect head skeleton thank you thank you very much